Glory to God. Woo! Strong. Strong. Hallelujah. I'm not one of them, but if the two don't show up, it's done. You just let me know. Amen. I'm not one of them, but if it doesn't show up, let me know. It's done. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. Fear will always diminish faith. If we look at the situation, we're looking like Peter out there on the water who first tells Jesus, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. Come. So he steps out the boat. He had enough faith. He had enough faith to get out of the boat. The rest of them stayed in the boat. But as he walked out, and all of a sudden, he took his eyes off of the Lord Jesus Christ and put his eyes on the wind and the waves, he began to sink. This is a faith walk. This is not where we're moved by the external circumstances around us. This is a faith walk. And we don't allow doubt to enter in because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that you do not see. And for some of you, you're seeing a harvest, but you're not committed to put the seed in the soil that will generate the harvest itself. You're believing dad for something great, for something big, and you can see it but you will not do the things necessary to bring it into fruition. Yes. Wonderful. They got it before the word of the Lord came out. Is that the one who gave or is committed to give? Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It's not about money and it's not about gimmicks. It's about obedience. And obedience is better than the sacrifice. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you, but Minister Denise, one year, Minister Denise had money and she was going to fix her house up with. And so she had plans to do that until dad interrupted her and said, no, you give that money to TFT, to the ministry itself. Now, I don't know, was it about 12 or something or more? 11, 11. And she obeyed God. And you have been retired for how many years now? 2016. So you've been retired for going on three, uh, seven, three, seven years. Praise God. And I've never seen her forsaken nor begging for bread. God has always satisfied her and taken care of her. He watches over her. She has extreme faith. COVID never even came to her house. And if it tried, she scared it off in the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't say that out of doubt and fear. And she didn't, not out of doubt and fear, but I don't say that, you know, to, to just publicize her business. But um, she didn't get the shot and she didn't get COVID. And to God be the glory. And people got up with, you would, you would want to rejoice over that. But some people get envious, jealous, mad, angry, and upset with something like that because all of a sudden they feel offended by that and it's like it was just a matter of faith it was a matter of trust and belief and so to God be the glory because he's doing some things in our midst and uh, we don't know how God's going to move we just want him to move whether he has us laying hands on people and whether they go down in the power or they just stand up the work is done at the point of contact. That's where faith is released. 
that point of contact. And so whatever God does, whether you feel it or not, whether you go down or not, you just need to know you receive something from dad. And it's for his glory and for your goodness. For your good, I should say. So um, this is just wonderful. This is just wonderful. You can be seated. Father, we thank you for the minutes that we have remaining, and we're not complaining. We are enjoying for your glory and great name's sake, because I just love it. As long as you show up, Lord, that's all that really matters. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles with you, um, how many of you have been keeping up with your reading as far as Mark and we're in Mark now. We're in Mark chapter what, 11 this morning. I believe it's chapter 11. Thank you for showing your hands. I just encourage you to join in. Get wet with us. Hallelujah. You know, it, it's like how much more does God have to do in order to get our attention for what he wants to achieve and accomplish? It'll never be done by I don't have time or I forgot or, you know, I really don't think I need to, that sort of thing. It might be the very thing that you need to unlock the door that you've been trying to beat down and get open for you. Simple instructions that are given by God um, matters when we hearken and when we obey. It is not law and order in that regard. It's just simple instructions because when Jesus was on the earth, he would give some simple instructions. And, you know, you could either obey it or you could disobey it. But it's not necessarily coming from the individual. It's coming from God because he really wants you to see your heart. He really wants you to see the things that would hinder you in your progress or your growth and maturity in God. And I'm saying that not to make anybody feel bad. It's just a living truth. God lives off of principles. I mean, he's eternal, so he's, he's alive, if you will. But he, 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 he runs things off of principles. And you heard the word several times, obedience and faithfulness. And it's not hard or difficult to obey God. It's not hard to be faithful. If it is, it's because there's something that's ruling on the inside of you. And you need to confront that thing. Because that thing is the very thing that can hinder you from your, again, growth and maturity in God. Or even experiencing the very things that God wants you to have. Amen? Say this with me. I want it all. I want everything God has for me. And if you don't want yours... I'll take yours too. Anything coming from God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, God, Jesus said, I've sent you into labor that another, I'm paraphrasing, you're sent into harvest what others have labored for. And it's like, well, they sold and they never reaped their harvest. That harvest is not going to go to waste. It's going to go to somebody else. <laughs> and so as you are pursuing your walk in relationship with God, and he begins to speak, and a lot of people, I, I bet if I ask you how many hear the voice of God, you know, probably half of you would say, I, I don't hear the voice of God. It might be more. It couldn't be less. But for the one that wants to hear the voice of God, practice by doing the instructions that he gives, because this is not just a religious place. This is a building, but we are God's building, and we are Christ's body. And so we operate on kingdom principles and not on feelings or emotions or the way the culture uh, acts and responds to everyday living and all. It's up to you. If you want joy, it's inside of you. Hallelujah. If you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you got love, you got joy, you got peace, you got gentleness, meekness, 
patience or long suffering. I mean, you've got all nine attributes of the spirit of the living God on the inside of you. And it can't get any closer than that. You already have and you already possess. But if you don't take advantage of it, it will just lie dormant. And God didn't give it to you for it to lie dormant. He didn't give it to you so that you would be affected by the ways and the whims of this world and the present conditions and things that go on. But you'd be impacted by the kingdom that is on the inside of you. The kingdom that's on the inside of you is greater than any other kingdom that there is to have ever existed or will exist. And all the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So in the end, we win. And since we live by faith, we've already won. Amen. You heard that song. Don't wait till the battle is over to shout now. You know, in the end, you're going to win. So just shout. <laughs> hey, glory. Be, no, be uh, not nosy, but noisy. Make a joyful noise. Shout unto God with that voice of triumph. A great is our God, and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So what a privilege and an honor it is to be before you just to be a servant of the Lord because God is so good and none of us are worthy, but he loves us so much that he fixes us up and then makes us worthy of what he's called us to do. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> and he gives us an anointing in order to do it. So blessed be his glorious name. Amen. I rejoice to Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm trying to get to the passage here. Um, if you have your Bibles, what's really stood out to me since we've been going through the book of Mark and all, um, the word in its entirety is good. Even when it exposes some of the negative things that have gone on, whether it be amongst God's people or whether it be about the adversary as well. It's just all good because he doesn't hide anything from us. But through it all, he teaches us how to navigate through good times and bad times. He teaches us how to, as he told the children of Israel, and thou shall be the head only and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only and not beneath. And so dad just reveals to us where he wants us to be. Hallelujah. He wants us to be in constant fellowship and communion with him. Why? Because this is the victory. Even our faith, our ability to believe and to trust God. This is what's wrong with the things that are going on in the world now. People don't trust God. They don't think God can handle the situations that they find themselves in, but he's the answer for every problem, situation, circumstance that we face. He's the answer to the war with Ukraine and Russia. God would call both of those men to the carpet and say, repent and believe in the gospel. So here we are. Mark chapter 4, I don't know how much... I'm going to get to, as a matter of fact, let's just go over to 2 Timothy chapter 1. In Mark chapter 4 in particular, it, it had to deal with the parable of the seed sower. And we know that there's four different types of soil, and the soil itself represents the heart. And what Jesus teaches us, especially in the book of Mark, because Mark, we believe, was the first gospel that was written then I believe it was Matthew, and then Luke, and then John came later because he was the last of the apostles to die and go on and be with the Lord, which means he didn't die. He just transitioned on into the presence of God. His work was done. They tried to boil him in oil, I think, two times, and they failed at that. They banished him to the Isle of Patmos, and 
All God did was gave him revelation of the end times and what was going to be happening. And then he sent that to the churches, if you will. And uh, they just didn't know what to do with John. John just had to go on and be with the Lord at his appointed time. But anyways, in the parable of the seed sower itself, there's something, uh, and if you caught it, good. If you already knew it, fine. But if you didn't, you really need to listen to what Jesus taught them. And it was dealing with the mystery of the kingdom of God. Because, see, we are, of course, human beings in this body. And we're in this natural realm of the world itself. But everything came into existence by the spirit realm. We once wore spirit beings, but when Adam and Eve sinned, we lost that contact, that consistent communion and fellowship with God. It was cut off, and then we had to try and communicate with God out of our soul and our body, if you will, and it never measured up. God put the law down to let us know through Moses that the way we were living and conducting our lives, it was not meeting his standards, though in his grace and mercy, he would visit at different times and use someone to get their attention in order to get the people's attention back on God and in right fellowship with him. But we could not get to the place God wanted us to be because his son, who was crucified before the foundations of the world, had not manifest on the earth yet. But now he has come. And then his son talked about another one that would come, and that's the Holy Ghost, the comforter, the helper, the innocence of the advocate, the standby, the counselor, the teacher who would be with us and would be in us. And that's what the New Testament church is all about. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the finished work of the cross. We believe in God the Father. We believe that God the Father loved us so much that he gave us Jesus. We believe that God the Father and Jesus sent us the helper, the Holy Ghost, to help us to fulfill God's mandate. And we haven't had it so good since before Adam and Eve sinned. I hope that makes sense to you. Before Adam and Eve sinned, they had unbroken fellowship with God. Then when they sinned, death not only came in, but separation. And the lack of communication and fellowship with many of God's sons and daughters that he created in his image and after his likeness to have fellowship with him. He created this world not for the ungodly to rule over, but for the godly to enjoy. Dad's plan and purpose in the beginning is wasn't that it was a failure. He already knew what would happen. But in the original, Dad planned for us to spend perfect harmony with him. And as he ruled in heaven, we would rule here on earth. We would fulfill that being fruitful and multiplying, filling the earth and subduing it without injuring or harming one another, without hating or being jealous or envious or, you know, just, you know, um, violence and things like that that take place today. Dad never intended for that to happen. That came as a result of the fall. Every problem that we have is a result of the fall of humanity. Then Jesus came. At the appointed time, Jesus came. God clothed in humanity, 100% God, 100% man, to bring about a reconciliation of that which was severed in the beginning to bring it back to now. And we've never had it so greater. The only thing better than what we have now is eternity. When this corruptible is swallowed up 
by incorruptible, when this mortal is swallowed up by immortality, where there are no more limitations, no more desires, no more uh, temptations and things of that nature, no more crying, weeping, or bickering, or whatever you have, being jealous or envious or fighting against one another, none of that will exist. But we got it so good right now because every one of us have the Holy Ghost in us who have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. But just like having gifts that are dormant within us, they're there, but they're not being used. Even so it is with the church of the living God who believe in the lordship of Jesus Christ and believe what he said that he was going to send the helper and he would be with us and he would be in us. He's the paraclete called alongside to assist us in this battle and conflict as well as to fulfill the will of God. This is as good as it gets until we all get to glory. We can take advantage of the opportunity that we have before us or we can just let it pass us by. I don't want it to just pass us by. It's just too much that dad wants to do in and through us. There was a time where I couldn't do something like that, go up and bless somebody, but I thank dad that he's brought me into what they call that wealthy place. Hallelujah. It's not about being materialistic because dad wants to bless us, that we will be a blessing to others. Amen. Anybody agree with that? Don't you, have, don't you feel good about when you can come and help somebody out, do something for them, if, especially if they're having a real difficult time and you're able to say, here. It's not bragging or boasting, but Pastor Lucia and I, we went and had breakfast at this restaurant that we normally go to from time to time. And so the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, go over there and give that couple X amount of dollars for their meal. And some of you have probably done that, and it's not uh, saying anything little, belittling that. But praise God that you're empowered to do so and not have to be concerned about, oh, I got to pay this or oh, I got to pay that. When you're operating in faith, Dad will have you give your last. He will. And by the time you get home, what you need is already taken care of. Amen. But he wants us in a position to be able to be a blessing to others. Not just praying about our own need. Because God is able to supply our every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So if dad is taking care of all our necessities, what we have is excess to be a blessing to others. Amen? Hallelujah. So we can take advantage of these opportunities that we have or we can let them pass us by. It can lie dormant within us, but nevertheless, it's present with us because God is present with us. So I'm trying to... Let's go to 2 Timothy in the 13 minutes I have remaining. Second Timothy chapter one. Hallelujah. When you get there, say amen. If you need more time, um, just say hold up. You, 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 you really, uh, you know, when we say you read your Bible and all, it's because it's really fun and awesome when all of a sudden scriptures start exploding in your spirit. And sometimes they come faster than you can, you know, get a handle on it so that you can go ahead and it's like, you want me to share this now? What do you want me to do? And if I don't get to share it, it's like, well, it was good anyways. It was a good meal. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm trying. Give me a moment. I'll get there. I love this part. Because when I, when I read this, I think about, I used to think about myself, but now it's gone down to minister killings. And uh, 
since Zariah stood at the altar during that camp that we have for AOH, she says she want to preach. So it's going to go on further. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. It's, uh, because I could go back, you know, it was in my grandmother. And it was in my mother. So it's in me, but only it, it got, got two of us. He got Minister Denise and he got me. And we're not saying anything about the rest of our siblings. It's just God has something special for us in order to do his will. And so it's really not about flesh and blood. It's really not about, you know, being a relative of someone in the kingdom that gets you to that place. It has to be a divine calling of God. You don't get there just because I'm related to so-and-so and so-and-so can bequeath this to me because we're blood related. It's like, no, flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom or inherit the kingdom. But dad can do things and you'll see it in your family lineage because as you're praying for your family, for your children, you want at least what you have and more to be in your seed and in your offspring. And that it'll go into their offspring. And that it'll go into their offspring if the Lord Jesus tarries. This ain't all for just one person. I mean, we have to, we have to go by faith. Because if we don't go by faith, we just say, oh, well. And it's like, no, dad doesn't say, oh, well. It's like, well, it ain't coming in my time. Well, it ain't your time. It's my time. I have to go, with the, go through those kind of things with the Lord. You know, because we want our children in. We want them. Dad already prophesied concerning them. And that word has to come to pass because he spoke it and we didn't. And so anyways... The, the, the point of it is, is that you pass it down from one generation to the next generation. Minister Patton and Sister Diana, as they were growing as a kingdom family early on, I would remind them, you're a kingdom family. You're not just a worldly family that's going to just have your, your house and your fence and your car and your job and stuff like that. You're a kingdom family. They are marked for greatness for the glory of God. Amen. 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 There's nothing to be ashamed about when it comes to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you can be the greatest doctor. You can be the greatest businessman, businesswoman. You can be the greatest person in your career. Architecture, what have you. Whatever career you would desire. You can be great at that. But if you don't have no relationship with God, it's all dung. It's all rubbish. It means nothing. No matter how many lives you may impact, it won't help you for where you're going. We can't escape or get away with it by saying, well, they were such a nice person. They were such a good person. They gave over here, they gave over there. They did all of these wonderful things. But they didn't have Jesus. I shared with you before, it's worthy of repeating now since I'm talking about this. Um, at one time early on in ministry, I had a family that was coming. And as God began to open up the eyes of their understanding about his ways of doing things, which is really what the kingdom of God is all about, God's way of doing things. And so the father came to me and talked to me. He says, you know, I taught my kids how to be successful. I taught them the importance of education and all. And they were going on the right path in that. He said, but I didn't teach him about God. And that is a tragedy. It is a tragedy because no matter what they can accomplish and achieve with their own gifts, talents, and abilities, that won't save them. But they're my friend. It still won't save them. They're my relative. It still won't save them. The only way they can get saved is by receive, first repenting of their sins and receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's the only way you can get saved. Then you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish for the glory of God. But the good works will never amount to anything when it comes to the salvation of the soul. And that's why the hour of urgency of being an effective witness 
for God and sharing the gospel with people, such as um, the E-team went out this past Friday, and I forget how many, five or six were saved. Five and three rededications. And I thank them, and I thank you, Minister Mays, for the consistency of going out, even if nobody else goes with you. It is not in vain, and God will not forget your labor of love because it is so important and critical. And I understand there were about 17 of them that went out, including kids. We got the kids involved. Hallelujah. Pass it on to the next generation. Are there any of the kids here that that went out? When I say kids, 18 and under, uh, you know, stand up, please. Hallelujah. Oh, those are patent nights. Yeah, they terrorize the enemy. See, kingdom family. Glory to God. Thank you for that. God bless you. And, and Princess and Kayla, are you guys bilingual? Yeah. Don't you like that voice? Praise God. Yeah. They can preach the gospel in English and Spanish. Hallelujah. They're not the only ones. But I thank them for going out. Because this is what it's about. Shout it out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, are you going to get to some scripture? I'm trying. I'm, I'm really trying. I'm really trying. But let me just go here. Uh, let's go 2 Timothy verse, <laughs> chapter 1, verse 5. Um, back up to verse 4. Greatly desiring to see thee. Paul, writing an epistle to his young son in the faith, uh, who was dear to his heart, um, he saw the markings of, of uh, a generational blessing, I'll just put it like that, going from his grandmother Lois, I think it was Lois, Eunice, uh, yes, grandmother Lois, and then his mother Eunice, and Paul's convinced that it's in Timothy. So, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, pure, genuine, unadulterated faith. No room for doubt, no room for fear, only believe kind of faith. That is in thee. Everybody say in thee. Okay, so faith is in you as well. And it's going to be up to you to use it. You can ignore it and keep living by your own abilities and strength and all. Or you can draw upon it and trust God to do what you cannot do. Because he's always calling us to a task that is greater than us. We can acknowledge even salvation itself is greater than us. We cannot achieve it in our own strength, might, and power. It took someone from the outside, God, to reveal to us what was inside us, sin that had to be dealt with. And since we had no power to deal with it and were subject to it, it was our master, our dictator, the one who controlled our lives, our impulses, our desires, and things of that nature, it took God on the outside to come inside, clean house, and then say, now I can use you because you are fit for my use. Amen. Hallelujah. You ought to be excited about dying to your old self. Amen. Yeah, for some of us, we don't like it anyway. We don't like the things that we did, and we hope nobody finds out. You like that part, that part right there? Amen. And isn't God good that he won't just, it takes a lot for God to expose you. Because he will give you warning after warning after warning after warning after warning. And when you don't heed to the warning, God says, okay. So, because he's a loving God, a merciful God. He knows us. He knows that we are dust. But he loves us so much. Because he created us in his image and after his likeness. So when I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded or convinced that it is in thee also. 
listen to this, after acknowledging what had been deposited into Timothy, his grandmother was saved, his mother was saved, and they raised up Timothy to be saved. Anybody have a good grandmother? We did. She was mean, too. Praise God. Tough grand. But I got to understand her once I got saved. And I got to have conversations with her that I normally wouldn't have got the chance to have with her before she left this earth. So he acknowledges the faith that is in Timothy, and he's persuaded that he has it. Like, if there was any doubt or questioning, there's nothing like whether you call him a mentor, whether you call him a spiritual father, whether you call him your pastor, or what have you, whatever title you may use in ascribing to one that is pouring into your life, you know, you have high regard for them, respect for them, because they're dealing with you concerning life. And it's your life personally. And how you spend your time is really important to you. You don't have time to waste. You want to redeem and make the most of the time that you have. If you're going to do something, start working on it now. I think Minister Patton was talking about something along that lines. If you're going to do something, start working at it now. He was using like a job or starting a business or, you know, looking for that raise or promotion, if you will. You got to start. When you start, that's an act of faith, and you start to see things come together. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. The thing about nothing is it requires no effort, which many times we like to just, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, and you just, you know, stay where you're at. So, wherefore I put in remembrance now in verse 6, in spite of the fact that he recognizes the unfeigned faith that is in him, he says, I put you in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Stir up the gift. If you read it in the New Living Translation or in the Amplify, it'll say something like, fan into flame the fire. In other words, what dad has put inside of you. Now, Paul said with the laying on of hands, and I'm sure there was a transference of the anointing, and it could be in some cases when, you know, uh, Paul was ministering to those who had not received the Holy Ghost, he would lay hands, and that's how it has passed on for many generations. Sometimes you can lay hands on an individual, and they just start speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Sometimes you have to minister and kind of like, you know, um, you know, bring the person along, for lack of better words, explain uh, the things that are going on or what could happen. Like, you know, sometimes when the Holy Ghost comes on, your ears will get hot. Sometimes your head will get hot. Sometimes your fingers will start, you know, trembling, if you will. Sometimes you just, you, you just something in your belly starts to move. Your tongue may start, you know, and it's not making any sound, but it's moving within your mouth. And it's like those are just various manifestations when the spirit of the living God comes on you. Some, you don't have to do anything. God just does everything for them. All of a sudden, 3 o'clock in the morning. I had to share with my cousin last week. I said, it can happen 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, how do you know? Well, the first time I went forward for the baptism with the Holy Ghost, I spoke, but it was like drip, drip. You know what I mean by drip, drip? But I witnessed the power coming on an individual, and it just flowed. I was like, whoa. My God. And so I wanted that. I spoke, but it didn't come out flowing like that. So I told the Lord, Lord, I want it like that. Well, three in the clock, three o'clock, three in the clock. Three is in the clock, too. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm in bed sleeping. Next thing I know, 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Waking up to that because that's just how good God is. So it can come in various ways, but nevertheless, the main, the main thing is that you get everything that God has for you as you're living this life, walking this walk of faith. So Paul put Timothy in remembrance to stir up the gift. And sometimes when, especially at like a presbytery, where somebody is about to be uh, uh, um, set in office, if you will, for whether it be a pastorate or whether it be evangelism or, you know, just some office of ministry, um, and you lay hands on them and there's a transference of the anointing, there's a transference of a particular gift that the Lord would manifest through them, whether it be the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings, workings of miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues. A lot of times you hear me give a tongue. Minister Patton is one of the main ones that will interpret. If you were here last Sunday, I think it was, and the way the Spirit of God moved, I think it was last Sunday, the way the Spirit of God moved, I'm like, ooh, because uh, I'm feeling it. And it's like there may be more than one interpretation and sure enough, I think there were three, all related to the tongue that was given. And so God moves in various manifestations, but it's all for the edification of the saints of God, for the building up of the body of Christ, that we may be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and carry out great exploits in his name. Now, all of us as believers are able to pray in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. All of us as believers are able to lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. All of us as believers, not that we would tempt God, but if we picked up any deadly thing or somebody tried to put something, poison us, if we picked up any deadly thing, it won't hurt us. God will get us through that mess. That's for everybody. But then there's certain gifts and offices or lanes that a particular man or woman of God may walk in. And they walk in it um, not occasionally, but continuously. I'll put it like that. And so in the laying on of hands, Paul could have been saying, you know, when I laid hands, that gift that God gave you at that moment. Or the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he's like, whatever it is, stir it up. I always desired the gift of faith. And to a large degree, I believe I've got it. Why do I say largely? Because there's so much stuff that I believe God for. So when Paul was saying this to Timothy, he's like, stir it up. So whatever you got from God, stir it up. You know, there are spiritual gifts and there are what they call motivational gifts. And then there are the ministry gifts, fivefold ministry gifts. And those gifts are given to us by God. And we are to stir it up, fan into flame. What does that mean? It doesn't mean we have to wait for revival to stir it up. It doesn't mean that we have to wait for God to move in Africa and then we get word of it and then we get excited and then all of a sudden we start doing our things that we're supposed to do. This is something that God gives to each and every one of us that we can stir up. In other words, keep it burning at full flame. Never let it die out. Never let it die out. Never let it die out. Because that's what happens with us when we get so preoccupied with other things that we ignore the main thing, the good thing. It's like Mary and Martha. Jesus comes into the house, been invited to the house, comes into the house, and what is Mary doing? Mary's at the feet of Jesus the whole time he's there. Martha's around cleaning up stuff, doing all kind, concerned with all kind of natural stuff that has nothing to do 
with Jesus being there, except that she wants to make everything nice for him and give him this nice three-course dinner, if you will, so that Jesus will be happy. You know where Jesus was happy at? Somebody hungry and thirsty for him. Somebody knowing how much they desperately need him. Somebody that's listening to every word that comes out of his mouth and taking it to heart. Somebody that has delivered them. He, he, he has delivered them. He has had impact on their life. And they're just following him everywhere he goes. And that's not just for biblical times. It's for our time as well. And whatever's trying to smolder that out, because if you feel like, well, you know, I can't do all of that. Yes, you can. You can do all of that and more. You just bury. Because inwardly, there is a desire for more. I mean, if you're, if you're not careful, you will go out there and just do all sorts of things, buy all sorts of stuff, and never have enough. Be like a child at Christmas. You buy them all of these gifts, they play with them for a little bit, and then they're looking for something else. But like Jesus told the woman at the well, if you knew who it was who's talking to you. And you would ask him for a drink of water. He would give you everlasting water that you'll never thirst again. That's where our satisfaction is. That's where our completeness is. That's where our wholeness is, is drawing from Jesus. We don't have to have him in the natural like they had him in biblical days. We got him in the spirit. We got the Holy Spirit. We got his name. We can now go boldly before the throne of God. We don't have to go in there with our head down or go down there, you know, go in there shame or, you know, feel guilty about something. It's like we can freely, confidently, and boldly go before the throne of grace and talk to our Father because of Jesus Christ who's seated at his right hand. And if nothing more, say, Dad, Help me to uncap the gift that you have deposited within me. Because it is so vital and so necessary for the building up for the, of the body of Christ. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given it to you. There's something that he's instilled in you. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you didn't just get translated out of the powers of darkness or out of the kingdom of darkness into God's marvelous life. Dad instills something in you, and if it's not just one thing, it's more than one. Remember how he gave to those, he gave to one five, and to one two, and then to one one, each according to their ability? He's talking about you too. Are we going to bury it or leave it buried, or are we going to dig up those treasures? Say, Lord, help me to uncap this. I don't need to be sitting idle. I don't need to be just, you know, going through life aimlessly like I have no purpose or I'm just so unfulfilled or I just, you know, get busy for the kingdom. Start with praying. Start with seeking God. Start, you get practice here. And it's like on the job practice, if you will. Because you're expected to do something. And you can look at me, but it's not, it goes beyond me. It's, it's, it's God. He's expecting something out of you because he put something in you. And the more you give over and allow the spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. And allow the spirit of God to use what he's given us for his glory, for our good, for the benefit of the body, and also to save sinners and bring them into the kingdom, bring them into the house. He's given it to us. Fan it into flame. Fan it into flame. How do I do it? I do it by praying.
I do by reading God's word that goes back to the parable of the seed sower because the sower sows the word. And it will benefit some of you. And for some of you, it'll be snatched away because you have no understanding, no clue. I don't know why he's got to say all that stuff. I'm not doing any of it. And it's like, that's, it's, it's not, I don't take, take it personal. I can't. But it does go before God. And it's like, that's too much pressure. No, the pressure that's building up in you is you preventing God from moving through you like he desires to. But I guarantee you, if you go and somebody says, I'm sick, and you lay hands on them, and they say, I'm healed, you're going to shout for joy. And you're going to be looking for somebody else that you can go lay hands on. If somebody's got a devil in them, and you go up to them and you say, come out in the name of Jesus, and that devil comes out, you... For the glory of God. Somebody needs a financial blessing and you have it in your possession to bless them. You're like a lifesaver to them. They're at home crying and how am I going to make it? I don't know how I'm going to get through. Nothing's happening for me. Oh God. Hello. The Lord sent me over here to give you this. If you would have saw that couple that I was sharing with you. The expression on their face, they probably didn't know. They probably thought, I'm going to come over there and ask them, can you give me a dollar or something like that so I could go get me something? But their face brightened up. And that happens many times when you go and bless someone. It, like, lifts a burden off of their shoulder. And for the glory of God, you have helped by your yielding and, will and willingness, you have helped to deliver somebody out of the bondage that they were in. And they just give God all the glory. You remember that young girl, um, Sister Rhea's friend? She's not here today, right? When she shared her testimony about how Oh, my word, translation, they had been believing God for a house. And it had been a while. And then finally, they got the house to move into. And then all it took was one. All it took was one, and then it trickled. It's like, here, go get you something. Um, go get you something for your bedroom. She goes, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah. And guess what? That week, I got three times what I gave to her. People just came here, here, and they were all unexpected. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. That wasn't the purpose, but that's just how good our God is. Amen. Be a sower. Be a sower. Sow into somebody's life to bless them and then watch God bless you in return. Because you're doing it in obedience to him. You're not doing it just to be recognized. I'm trying to stop. When I see movement, it's like. So, with all that being said, coming back, stir. I kind of do like this. You know, like you got that big old bowl in front of you. Stir. Lord Jesus, by faith, I now stir up the gift of God in me. The actions of the Holy Ghost, I yield to, I submit to, and I surrender to the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I step out in faith as I'm seeking you and you're showing and revealing things to me that I step out and do it in your mighty name. But I'm not going to let it be dormant. Fan into flame. We want revival. Get revived. Come alive to God. 
come alive to God. That's what revival is. It's about rising up uh, again. The only difference is, is the fire hasn't gone out in you. It's just simmering or low. They say it's like a soldier who... He's on the night watch, if you will, and he's got that fire going to help keep him warm. And as the fire gets low, then all of a sudden he begins to stir this thing up to generate more heat for him. And so we as believers, especially if you're feeling low, there ought not be a low person in this place at any time. We have too much. We have been inundated with the glory and power of God to a level and degree that not many experience because they're either afraid or they don't want to have nothing to do with that. They don't want their reputations ruined. And it's like for us, we don't have no reputation. We just believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have no reputation. If you want to know our reputation, you got to go and dig up the blood of Jesus Christ and find out what that reputation was. Go into the sea of unforgetfulness and find out what it was. Passion, people! Passion! Passion, people! Passion for the glory of God! Passion for the will of God! Passion! Hunger and thirst for him. If you say, I don't, go in your prayer closet and say, Lord, help me to hunger and thirst for you. Say, Holy Ghost, help me. When you're feeling weary in prayer, say, Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, infuse me. Holy Ghost, ignite me. And guess what? If you don't stop and you keep going before you know it, he has taken over. Somebody knocking on the door. Can you keep it down in there? I'm sorry, but this ain't me no longer. I've surrendered to the power of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we have communion. And for anyone who has to leave now, because I know we've been over time, um, I just, you know, we, we extended praise even a little longer because I really just want to not go backwards, but go forward. To where if, if you don't get a sermon, you're good. As long as the Holy Ghost has showed up. Gentlemen, you can go ahead and pass it out. And we'll wait on each other. Thank you for doing that. I just really want to be free. That word that the Spirit of God birthed through Sister Michaela. It's not about her. And yes, you know, Pastor Lucia has busted me out saying she's my favorite and all. Um. It, it, it's, it's not all about that. It's not a carnal thing. It's in the realm of the spirit is what I see for her. And when you see God using people, it, it just captures your attention. And you want it for everyone. But she prophesied like she's never prophesied before. I don't know. Have you ever prophesied like that before? And did you even recall the words? Because I asked her, I said, write it down. Uh, right, right after, write it down what the Lord revealed for as much as you can remember. And then we found out Minister Posada had everything working in order to record it. And so I asked Pastor Lucia to, di uh, you know, do the dictation and all. And she wrote it out. And she even sent it back to her and shared it with her. She didn't remember saying that. We knew it was God as it came forth. How old are you, Sister Michaela? 17? 17. I can't ask her how long she's been saved because she's been saved all her life. She was saved in her mother's womb. Um, however, it was such a mature word that, you know, I sent it out to everybody by email. If you didn't get it, let us know. We'll get it to you. Because it was clear, concise, it was on point, all those other things that you could throw in there to, to describe it. And it's like, it so bore witness with my heart. 
that it was from God. And it's like it's what he wants us to do because he don't want us to just hold church services. I've said that before. But he really wants us to have impact, not only in this city, but even around the world. And through your financial giving and all, we are able to impact people in other countries and other places. Um, Pakistan, we share in what's going on there. I think Pastor Ross said today he has about 50 churches out there in Pakistan. We support that. When we send money to uh, World Harvest. Um, Voice of the Martyrs, those who in modern day today experience the persecution that they did in scriptures, being beheaded, body parts being severed, women's breasts being cut off, men's arms, legs being cut off, if you will. Husbands dying, I just read about a, a testimony yesterday. This lady, this happened a while back, but it's like front line. Her husband, they're Christians, but, you know, they're, um, I forget what country they're from. But anyways, her husband had left and then called her up and said that, you know, I won't be coming home. Uh, tonight and she didn't understand or know what was going on and a couple of days later they found this body out there in the field somewhere where they you know they don't just kill they torture and that goes on today in this life with uh, many of our brothers and sisters and they are our brothers and sisters in Christ their lives are just on the line every day. Families being uh, destroyed, separated, homes being confiscated. And so they need support, and we, we do. We send every month some support. Thanks for your, your givings. We like to do more, and one day we will be able to do more. Preferably soon, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll end it at that. Thank you for your financial support. It's desperately needed in that regard. So many things going on that we can have a part in. We support them. We support the kingdom of God. We are so blessed in this country. We can pick and choose what we want to eat. We can buy bottled water. I don't know when the last time I drank tap water. Probably when I made Kool-Aid out of tap water. That's been so long ago. But praise be unto God, we can get bottled water. It's not supposed to be contaminated, but there are people that have to drink out of contaminated water. They boil it or what have you, but they have to water that you wouldn't even dare I mean you you wouldn't even put your feet in and some people can walk anywhere barefooted but I can't I you know I'd be but nevertheless hallelujah before I go into communion let me share this um, I, and I think I understand this and I you know brother Sean you can let me know after is he still here Oh, there he is. Brother Sean was saying, praise God, I've been having issues at my, at Chuck E. Cheese, and now the same manager who was against me is for me now. My hours was cut while others increased. Now, praise God, after praying, God turned it around, and now I'm working all the way until closing. So does that mean you got more hours now?
Yeah, that's what most managers do. That's what they're trained to do because people come and go. But um, the question I'm asking is, did you get more hours? Amen. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you, Father, for favor. Thank you for favor. Thank you for favor. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's take the bread and the cup. I'll just pray. Father, we thank you for the bread and the cup. Representing the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we do proclaim Jesus' death until he comes, and we do it in his remembrance. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being our great king and high priest, our Passover lamb, our Savior and Lord. You are the shepherd and bishop of our soul. We do honor you this day. For the bread which we break is the communion of your body, which was broken and suffered for us. You were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon you. And with your stripes, by your stripes, we are here, healed. So command your blessing this day, Lord God, as we eat and drink together. Bless us now. Amen. Let's eat together the bread. Hallelujah. And the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of your blood, which was shed for many for remission of sin. Without the shedding of your blood, there is no remission of sin. It is the cup of redemption. But we have not been redeemed by corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with your precious blood, as of a lamb without blemish or spot. Thank you, Jesus. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, unto the only wise God, be glory and honor forever and ever and ever. And everyone who agrees, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. The ushers and all will collect the cups from you. Um, so please do that. You don't have to set them on the chairs or anywhere. They'll be right there to get it from you. And if a trash can is near you, you can also put it in there yourself. Thank you so much. We love you so much. We thank you for being here today. It's first Sunday, which means we'll be having prayer this evening. And we'll give God all the glory. Come out. You never know what the Lord's going to do. Last time he came through big time. And uh, changing things forever for his glory so the Lord our God bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious unto you be, lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace the name of the Lord be over you that he may bless you in Jesus name amen we love you dearly fresh start I would like to meet with you in the warehouse thank you